So we're going to begin with chat and consider when and why to use that within Zoom. So we've noted we've already used it today, right? We used it as a way for everyone to introduce themselves and for Brian and I to get a sense of who is in the room and what's already on your mind. So the great thing about chat is it's easy to use. It's already built into all of our Zoom meetings. It allows for quick feedback. You can consider using it at the start like we did just to get people warmed up and engaged. You can use it as a pause point in the middle of your class. You know, I feel like I'm not sure if they're still listening to me right now. I feel like I'm speaking into the void. Let me take a moment and ask my students where they're at in the chat window. And again, you can also consider using it at the end of class. Um, maybe you wanna provide, get feedback on how it went and have a quick check-in before your students go off on their way. So in some ways you can think about chat as a way to substitute for many short in-class writing reflections. Maybe some of you have experience with a one minute paper where you ask students to write for a minute, you could use chat in that way as well. And the nice thing about chat is it can be planned or spontaneous. You know, Brian and I came in today planned that we were gonna ask you to introduce yourselves. But again, in the moment, a question might occur to me that I'd love to know about all of you and I might just ask you to respond. So it provides a lot of flexibility for the instructor. And as we've described in these examples, chat can be a one-off activity. I'm gonna ask you this particular uh, question and have you answer it. Or it can be a consistent opportunity for questions, which is another way we're using it today. We have Purview staff members on hand who are answering your questions as they come up. So a few things to consider as you implement chat. One is that you want to give students enough time to respond kind of virtual wait time. So if you think about when you're leading a class in person, you might pose a question and let it linger. Maybe you count to five, count to 10 in your head, whatever your technique is, and give students time to process. And so the same is true when we're in this online format. You know, there was a, a slight pause as Brian and I waited for those introductions. You wanna give people time to locate the chat, to pull it up, to type in their response, to think, to process, just like you would in person. Another great thing to consider about chat is um, we've probably all encountered difficulties already in terms of internet connectivity or other technological issues that have arisen. And so a nice thing about chat is it's a great workaround. Sometimes the video and audio aren't coming in clearly. You could always ask your students to provide their responses in the chat window. One thing we wanna mention is that it's a good practice to read aloud the questions posted in the chat window if it's feasible. Uh, for our particular session, it's a little difficult to stay on top of them all, but in your class, it might be an option that's available to you. And that's great for accessibility. If you can think about someone who is only calling in and listening and can't view the chat, or a student who may be, say, using a screen reader, and it's a little bit overwhelming to be listening to the narration like me, in addition to having a screen reader announce what's in the chat. So you can think about making sure that your communication scheme is running both from the video and audio and then being tied to the chat as well. And if you're using a large class, you might consider designating a TA if you have one to monitor those questions and responses and verbally alert you if something comes up that should be addressed in front of the whole room. I, I have a, a test meeting running that I'll be kind of jumping back, back to to show off a couple of tools. Um, so I just want to quickly show off here um, just some functions that you would have within the chat window um, as someone who is running the session. Um, so if I open the chat here and move this one out of the way, um, we can see down at the bottom where you would normally type in a chat message um, that we have this button here um, that is these three dots and that just indicates that there's a menu here. Um, and so when we click on that, um, we see a couple of things. And the first is the ability to save the chat. So this might be a useful tool um, if you want to save the chat to either look, uh, look through afterwards or if you are communicating with your students uh, via the chat to maybe make that file available, um, you know, perhaps on your Canvas course page uh, for students to look through as well. Um, and then another thing I just wanted to show off is that as the host, you can set um, who participants are able to, to chat with. So obviously there's more restrictive settings here, um, making them so that they can't use the chat at all. Um, but you can also set if you want them to only be able to communicate with you um, or with everyone publicly or everyone uh, both publicly and privately, which just allows them to send um, private chat messages to both you and other participants in the meeting. 